Now what we'll do is Mitchell Chang will be providing an overview of some of the steps that you can take to hopefully protect yourself against some of those um, challenges that Myla has um, presented here. And so what I'm going to do is pass the keyboard to you. So you should have the keyboard now so you can advance the slides with your um, mouse or keyboard. Okay. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Myla. Uh, so this is Mitchell Chang from Trump Micro. I I think I have a bit of challenge here. I think Myla have uh, quite a bit of uh, high level prediction and a lot of uh, technology information. And my goal is the other part of this presentation is to help you, especially for small business, that you're bi you probably are very busy with you running your business, but don't have the nearly as much resources as a large enterprise. Uh, Daniel. Uh, advance the slides. Uh, they're not, they haven't advanced the end. Okay, can you, I, I may have, I can advance them, uh, yep. Uh, go ahead, advance for me, thank you. Let's see. There we go. Okay, yeah, then you can go ahead bring up the whole slide here. Okay, uh, as, you, as you guys heard from Milo, I think the technology is getting more complex. And one way I kind of look at the world, maybe not necessarily getting bigger, but it's, in a way it's getting smaller too, because uh, attackers are actors on the internet, they can use different tactics to, to, um, to, to, to uh, penetrate your, your 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 system or your computer or your home devices and uh, uh, and, and I think there's just a lot of opportunity so the threats are quite complex and when I first started uh, the industry where the attack was maybe a single vector or somebody launched some viruses on the, on the email and uh, and it will create some issues but today, there's a quite a bit of different factor people use, and uh, and and not only human you you know is users you can make some errors, but also I think more importantly is complacency uh, in cybersecurity because example I like to give you know if you live in a uh, recently safe neighborhood uh, residential area if you forgot lock your front door uh, you go out. And uh, you probably nothing will happen. People probably don't uh, come in to 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 take uh, things from your house. But if if you're on internet, it's very different, right? If you don't have the proper firewall or devices, I think every minute, every second, there's potential hundreds or thousands of devices are checking, pinging your 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 home network. And so if you leave your door unlocked on the internet, that's probably bad news. People, hacker will get in. And uh, so, and, and, and also with all the technologies coming online, uh, I think the challenge is that I, I, I could use a, like a car auto mechanic uh, example. Just like internet, you, you know, you, you, some people like to fix the car. So you may work on your own car or you, you, you find a good mechanic. IT, same way, you find a good IT consultant to help you. And uh, but, 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 but 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 with everything that's changing so fast that the parameters, uh, the awareness of technology change at a much greater speed because uh, you know in cars for the last twenty years, if you know how to maintain a car, you don't have to be the expert. You know you need to get oil change, or brakes change, or new tires. But IT. Uh, there's always new parameters coming online. Uh, for example, we talk about cloud and uh, IoT that stands for Internet of Things. These are smart devices, potentially you can have at home or run your factory. So these things are new and they're, they're moving at very rapid speed. Uh, Daniel, next slide, please. And so, so one thing I like to suggest audience, okay, go back, is to really Focus on the core fundamental hygiene, kind of like the the 
the, the coronavirus, you know, the physical virus uh, on the medical side, you know, they ask people to wear potentially masks, wash your hand frequently, or use hand sanitizer. These are kind of fundamental things on IT. It is a small business or medium business. I think you have to kind of follow, and and that's you know very uh, good defense. So I'm kind of going to go through. Uh, you may have seen some of these su suggested actions uh, uh, from previous uh, seminars, but uh, I'm going to kind of rehash some of these points. So Daniel. Uh, so if we look at the security, we can think about user security and device security. So I'm just kind of kind of keeping in these two categories. First of all, password is very uh, important defensive me measure, and uh, the, the common things we would recommend users to observe is uh, use different password for different account, and uh, because the password could get much complex, and there's a lot of them to remember maybe a, a tool like a password manager may be appropriate. And, uh, you know, I think the days of use like one, two, three, four, five are, you know, simple password is not really uh, feasible uh, because you can get, uh, get the attacker and crack your password within, you know, minutes or seconds with their, their tools they have. And uh, so, so these just a uh, general uh, hygiene on a password. And go ahead to the next slide. And on email, the reason emails are so important is that we see a lot of attackers try to use email and the social engineering to get you to, to fool the users to, to click on something. Until you, you, you get fooled by the email to, to click on so, something, uh, an email or a web link, that, and in a way you'll be open to, uh, backdoor for the for the attackers to come in, and sometimes you may go an attacker. Their purpose is really just to get into your system. So even though you you click on email, you you're not aware that your backdoor may be open already, or are you maybe exposed to some vulnerability. And uh, so the simple things you can do, like things like check on sender email, just make sure the name and, and address is who they see they are, and. Uh, uh, but but there's a lot of good tools out there today that actually uh, do do scanning through the email. If the for example the 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 the, the, the address, the email, and the sender is not the same person, they may flag or quarantine these email for you. And uh, um, and also there's a lot of tools out there that provide encryption for the email. So that's you know just just a different way to overcome the challenges. And uh, as I mentioned, the, the, the security tools and uh, they all support some of the, the more popular email platform uh, for small medium business, such as Office 365 and Gmail. And, uh, and also in the, in the corporate world, I think a lot of companies are promoting phishing awareness training. This is when somebody tried to send you some email, you, 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 you kind of have a better awareness that the email could be a fake email, but sometimes it's difficult because when they don't do social engineering, like in, in the case of BEC, uh, business e email compromise, it will try to find you know somebody like you know or you work with, your colleague. So it appears to be an intercompany email or, or email from friends, but, 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 but they just try to trick you. Okay, the next slide, please. And uh, online safety is quite important. So, so there's different vectors. They, they, there's email that can come in, and uh, there's a lot of tools out there today. Like they will embed a plugin into the, your browser. So before you go to a website, if the website is malicious, then they will flag the website. So, so they'll give you a warning pop up that you can't get into these website. That's something we call web reputation, and uh, there's filtering for or um, pornographic content and things like that, 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 that could be very useful. And again, I think you, you see this uh, multi-factor, two-factor authentication, and, uh, and that, 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 that's actually quite important. So uh, if you use uh, like Google or, or, 
uh, Apple product, they uh, they all have a two-factor authentication for your user personal account, and uh, and also another thing, online safety that's quite important. Is you, you don't really want to let your private information to be leak out, and uh, that that that's you know creating creating an opportunity for the hacker because if you post everything online, uh, especially what you want to prevent is your any personal identifiable information such as your driver's license number, social security number, and these type of things because uh, the, people can really use that information against you. And another thing online that's really popular now is uh, the, uh, file sharing. I think we, you know, most of the users out there, one form or another, you use a uh, storage space in uh, either an iCloud, Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, but from Microsoft. And uh, so, so it is important to, to understand, you know, the privacy setting on those, those tools as well, because if you're bringing in they bring across a huge amount of benefit. However, that, that you know, you, you can also expose your information to the outside world and uh, advanced slide, yeah. And uh, I might not mention about this remote office work because we're seeing more and more people now uh, have ability to work from home or anywhere, anytime because uh, you have internet, you have uh, mobile devices that allow you to do that. And uh, so basically what we see in the corporate world is before the business try to lock down their parameters on an IT network. And today uh, it's not, you can't really lock down because your boundary is everywhere. You got a lot of mobile devices, you got iPads can come into the corporate network. And so the, the priority for the professional ITs is more about protecting their data. Okay? And uh, how how do you do encryption or you know do multi-factor authentication and these type of things? And uh, also remote, one of the big vulnerability is actually public Wi-Fi, and we've seen a lot of these are happening where, uh, especially like a common Wi-Fi uh, access point names, like in the Starbucks coffee shop, and uh, what you, the attacker would do is create uh, intercept point that if you have these Wi-Fi passwords stored in your uh, system, they can auto connect to your system and they will do a lot of bad things to, to your system because once they get in, they, 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 they have control of your, your device. And, uh, and there's, you know, there's some term like VPN, virtual private network, HTTPS, and these some things either you, you, you know, as a small business owner, you probably want to take the time to understand from a high level, like I said, no, you don't have to be the expert in this area, but you know, consult with your IT consultant. You know, if, if you have to use uh, some of these technologies to protect yourself and your business. Um, and uh, backup actually is, is quite important because whether you do on-premise backup on a cloud, because today when we see any device or small business get compromised, there's a lot of times there's no way to recover because somebody like, uh, for example, ransomware, uh, ransomware, they, they use the encryption key to encrypt your data. And uh, even you pay them ransom, they may not give your data back. So it's important you have a frequent backup in case something goes really bad in your network, you can still recover the data, uh, recover your client information. Okay, next slide. Okay, I'm going to go through pretty quickly on the device side. Uh, um, uh, so device security on a computer server is this is more really an IT and need to be centralized. And uh, but it's important when you, when you select a, a, a malware protection or threat protection that. Uh, your system need to be able to provide you the ability to mitigate recovery, uh, recover your system if a breach happens. And, uh, and there's a lot of other things you can do, like your, you know, a lot of small uh, Soho, small home business, maybe using same PC for both uh, business and uh, home, home usage. And it's usually it's a good, good idea to isolate the two systems, not, not using the same 
same device because when you're playing games online or something that that could create some problems uh, uh, are making machine more vulnerable. And again, multi-factor, two-factor authentication and, uh, and also update software firmware regularly. That's quite important because there's always patches coming up. We're finding a lot of vulnerability on a daily basis these days. Okay, next slide. Okay, mobile devices is one of the entry point. And uh, uh, even though I think, um, you know, depend on Android or uh, iOS a system you may be chose to use, uh, there's a, you know, a trade off between the, the, you know, various systems, but potentially, uh, you know, that, that just one vulnerability point. So enforce the same uh, discipline is quite important also. Uh, next. Yeah, Wi-Fi router we kind of talk about already. Uh, um, yeah, it, again, it, it, it just, we take this, some similar step. We can go on to the next slide. Uh, any other devices and uh, so again just regular good good practice like your you know potentially your printer or remote devices uh, such as copier they may have a default access password any way you can lock them down we would highly recommend you uh, uh, take a look at that okay uh, next slide Okay, so I want to person from perspective. So we kind of gone through, talk about you as a user, you may want to just focus on the fundamentals. Even the world is changing very fast. It's important you're aware of the, the how, how the change are taking place. So now we're talking security from small, medium to up, up or to the inter large enterprises. You know, th there's there multiple layers. There's email, there's web, network, server and cloud security, but the world is, may not be that complicated where if you're running a small business, you may not have to worry about all those layers, but because the tools today, the vendors out there provide you, usually they will cover you know, multiple area through a, a software as a service and a SaaS offering. And so, so usually they, they all are pretty good. And uh, Wi-Fi and moving to 5G, 5G is something that in the United States and around the world, uh, company are start deploying, the, the telco start deploying uh, as we speak. So it will create much higher uh, uh, data rate than the 4G. And so that will you know, m m m m help enable a lot of things. And we see a lot of technology that's happening today, but, but they all start converging uh, into the, the next era. Uh, this IoT, if you're not familiar with the term, is the Internet of Things. The IoT could could be the smart device at home. I think Myla also mentioned uh, that we're making smart smart factories these days. So so everything is getting smart, right? Smart cities, smart factories. So so in an, in the essence, this is uh, what they call uh, in industry is industrial 4.0. Is the fourth industrial revolution uh, that that's happening? Uh, so, if you guys recall the back in the uh, assembly line concept of uh, making cars all the way to, to computer robotic, uh, that's the third generation. Uh, the fourth industrial revolution is happening because what what technology allowed us to do because of big data, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and DevOps. All these technology that's coming together allow us to put in a lot of smart devices is the sensors that place at the home, the factory. And uh, so, so I, I don't think there, there's anything we, we uh, will stop the, this movement because the benefit of, of the smart devices is outweigh the potential risk here, which is the, the, the security side. So I think the vendors like Trump Micro and others, they are working very hard trying to make sure all these devices are protected and uh, so we can have a safer world uh, as we're moving into, especially some of the IoT devices that are gonna be critical infrastructure. So I'm running out of time. This last plug here, just this part of social engineering, there's a lot of romance scam out there because Valentine's Day is coming up this week. 
And uh, so I want to just remind you, you know, be careful with uh, what you see out on the internet if you're in the uh, still in the, uh, you know, as you choose your dates or romance on the internet. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, I have list some resources you guys can look into this. We uh, Trend Micro Education, our initiative for education, we partner with various nonprofit organization. This is a, our outreach effort for the community, and there, there's a lot of resources out there. And uh, next, uh, but both on the nonprofit side and also on the federal and uh, uh, government side, that that you can get help. Okay, and. That concludes our uh, my my side of presentation. Back.